In this video, I will demo and review the new Hollyland SolidCom M1 intercom system. Welcome back. Today I have the Hollyland SolidCom M1 intercom system. It is a full duplex communication system operating in the 1.9 gigahertz band. What we'll do first is I will talk about what's included, all the features, then I'm gonna take it outside and we'll do a little bit of a range test to see and hear how it performs. Finally, I'll wrap it up with my thoughts, pros and cons, pricing and availability. Let's get started with a quick overview. The Hollyland SolidCom M1 wireless intercom system supports up to eight team members, providing each of them with a wireless belt pack and professional wired single ear headset. Ideal for small to medium sized events, such as a concert, church functions, trade shows, broadcasts, live stream, TV and film. The SolidCom M1 system delivers clear and conversational communication without interference. And it also offers easy app and web page based setup and control. Hollyland sent me the eight pack version of the SolidCom M1 system, but it's also available in a four belt pack version as well. Either way, you're gonna get these nice durable cases. All right, so in case number one, this holds our eight headsets and they come in these nice drawstring nylon pouches. And this is our case number two, which pretty much holds the rest of the system. This sort of maybe serves as like an unboxing of sorts. They did ship these inside uh, cardboard boxes, but these cases definitely seem Pelican Air Esque, and I feel like they're, you know, definitely ship worthy. Uh, so here we have our base station and underneath the base station is a little compartment where we can stow away some cables and other accessories. We see our first three belt packs down here on the side. And then we have these eight spare batteries. Every pack comes with two batteries. Over here is the battery charging station. And as you can see, there's eight spots for the spare batteries. And what's nice is the belt packs can actually pop right into these spots and charge without having to take the batteries out. Underneath this compartment is where our other five belt packs are hiding. And up top here, there's a little spot for some power supplies and this accessory that they give you, which is like a 3 8 inch to get you onto a tripod or a C-stand for your base station setup. And this is a clever use of space in the lid. There's a place here for the pair of these optional FRP antennas. All right, we've got everything out of the cases now and powered up, so we'll go through things in a little bit more detail. We'll start with our base station. So this essentially is the hub which all our belt packs communicate to and from. And it's nice colored display here where it shows you whether or not a pack is linked, what the battery life is, and what kind of signal strength it has, as well as if it's in talk mode or muted. What's really nice about this menu is it's very simple. You hold the center button for a few seconds. It takes you in. In this main menu here, we can set up a network to control the base station from a free app. You can cascade these systems together for even more than eight belt packs. And so you can choose in the next menu item whether this would be the slave unit or the master unit. This system actually integrates with other brands of comm systems like ClearCom. So if you're bringing this into an environment that already has a comm system, it ties in uh, very easily because it's set up for four wire and there's another option here for two wire. What's cool about this comm system is there's groups. So if we go down into this groups tab, we can tell it we want to customize maybe instead of one or two groups. And here you have, you have groups A, B, and C. And so you could put some of your packs on group A and other packs on group B and C and so on. And then you basically have, you know, three different, up to three different systems all communicating through that same hub. So that's really the front of the unit on the top. These are where those FRP, optional FRP antennas will get plugged into. And we could talk a little bit more about those when we do our range test, because I'll tell you why you would probably want to use those, when and why. On the side, we have a power button. On the back, we are currently powering this using Sony L-Series batteries. There's two slots. There's also another pair of 3 8 connections here if you wanted to mount it in a different configuration. All right, next we'll talk about the belt packs. These are also really easy to navigate. You long press the center button here, and it brings you into a menu where you can pair the unit to the base station but when I turned all these on when I first got this system, it just automatically pairs. So I don't think you'll 
need to do this very often, but if you did, you could do it from here. There's also a side tone option, which gives you the ability to hear yourself just a little bit in your own ear. And I think the idea here is that it just gives you a little sense of confidence to know if you actually have an open mic or not. On the top, we have two antennas. We have these four LED lights, which are battery lights. So it tells you when you have 100%, 75, 50, 25. Talk button engages the microphone. And what's nice is, I don't know if you can see this, I can see it. There's a little red LED in here. So when you look down just in your peripheral, you'll see that it's red. And that lets you know that your mic is open. It's a hot mic. So you do need this to be pushed as well as this to be down to be heard. But it's nice they give you the option because some people would rather just leave this down the whole time and use their button here instead of flipping it up and down all day long. On the other side here, there are plus and minus for your volume. That looks like there's about maybe 10 steps of volume. On the bottom is the power switch. This is how you turn the packs on and off. On the other side, there's a battery door. You slide this open and it kind of pops up like that. The batteries come in pretty easily. There's a little tab. The batteries last about six hours. And because you get a set of two batteries per pack and there's a charger here, you should really never find yourself without a battery, even for a long day, as long as you stay on top of keeping them on charge, right? On the other side of the pack, we have this USB-C port, which allows you to do firmware updates from the base station if you connect them hardwired or to charge as well. There's a battery door here. You just click that little lever and it pops open. Makes it nice and easy, quick for battery changes. On the back, we have a belt clip made out of metal. These are removable. If you don't want to wear it on your belt, by the way, it sits sideways on your belt like this on purpose. And when I first got it, I wondered why, why isn't it upright? Like I'm always thinking like antennas should be upright, but these antennas are so short because it's 1.9 gigahertz. So I think it's, uh, you know, it doesn't make much of a difference, but I noticed that these are actually a little more comfortable sitting sideways. That way, when you sit down, you don't have this, this thing digging into your leg. It kind of sits off to the side a little nicer, in my opinion, like this. It appears like they went all out here on the connectors. These are nice, heavy duty, military grade, medical grade Limo connectors. And what's cool about these is, I think that's how they're able to um, add in features like this LED that lives in your boom microphone here. There is also, this seems like a nice little extra, is a second port for a headset. So you can use different style of headsets and that's wired for TRRS. In general, the build quality on these packs, as well as the base station, really everything in this kit, it seems to be very durable. It's almost like uh, parts of it feel like it's aluminum and maybe some of the corners are sort of like a hard rubber. All right, so next I want to talk about these headsets. These are actually very comfortable. I'll take this off. If you look in here, the ear pad is like a pleather leather, not sure but it's very soft and it feels nice on the ear, especially after a long day. And as well as on the other side of the head here, I kind of like that it's only just one ear because it does a really nice job of isolating. So if you're in loud environments and these are designed to be used at, you know, events like music, concerts, things like that, it does a good job of really isolating that ear, but also doesn't tie up your other ear. So you can actually use that for a program feed if you had to or just to have your ear open so you can keep an ear on things that are actually happening near you. The boom arm is cool. On this version, it goes either way. So you can make it a right side of the head or left side of the head, like I had it before. In general, they did a good job on sort of the pliability or range of motion, if you wanna call it that, for this boom arm. It's got a little gooseneck from about here to here. And then this just has some play. It's like a little rubber, this end here is just rubber. So in general, very comfortable headset. It's also smooth up in here and soft on the top of your head. I didn't notice any pinching. Sometimes you wear headsets where like it rips some hair out with <laughs> when you take it on and off. Uh, so far, I haven't had any issues like that. This boom arm is nice and sturdy. The cabling feels nice and thick. I feel like compared to their older system, I reviewed on my channel a while back, the Mars T1000 and um, it's a nice system, but this definitely feels a little more 
durable, like it could take a beating. They did a really nice job on the battery charging station. It's just a nice small footprint. They, they pretty much got everything they needed in here, but no more than that, which is perfect. So you can plug all eight of your packs straight in, let them charge overnight. You don't have to pull every single battery out of every single pack. And then they give you this other spare set of batteries, which could be charging up in the front here. All right, so we're here at a local park. We're gonna set up the SolidCom M1 comm system and do a line of sight range test in that direction. So we'll spin it that way. So this system offers two different antenna options, each with different amounts of range and coverage. Using the built-in panel antenna, the SolidCom M1 is advertised to offer 1,300 feet line of sight off of the front of this panel with the rear pickup lobe of about 160 feet. So in a straight line, we're expecting 1,460 feet. That seems very impressive for a 1.9 gigahertz system. I had my wife and two boys come along to help execute this walk test, and I'm happy to report that the system easily achieved those distances using the built-in panel antenna. For the next part of this test, I attached the optional FRP antennas, which advertise range in a 360 degree radius of about 985 feet. So in theory, if the base station was placed in the middle of your set, you'd get almost 2,000 feet if your belt packs were at each extreme end. In this test, we had solid communication at 985 feet. The quality seems slightly less articulate towards the far ends of that advertised range, but we could still completely understand each other. All right, so I just want to say thanks to my family for helping me do this shoot. I'm about halfway down the path here to get to our 1,300 feet line of sight. And so far, so good. It sounds nice and clear. As you can hear, this is a good example to hear what this thing actually sounds like. It's uh, basically, I think the frequency response is 200 hertz up to 7K. So, you know, it's perfect for communication. If anything, I think it helps it kind of cut through. So this is what it sounds like. I decided to take the SolidCom M1 system onto a shoot I had booked. It was indoors, TV show shooting in a TV studio. I wanted to see what the crew thought. After deploying the headsets to the crew, one of the producers immediately remarked about how clear the communications were compared to the walkie-talkies they had been using prior. Because this is a full duplex intercom system, it offers a more conversational style of communication where everyone can speak and hear everyone else simultaneously, which the crew seemed to really prefer. This TV show focuses on woodworking, and so there were times where loud power tools were being used, and the SolidCom M1 did a great job cutting through that extreme background noise. So I can see why this would be a great solution for loud events like music concerts or theater. Overall, I think the SolidCom M1 intercom system is really impressive for the price, and we'll get to that in one second. I was trying to think of any kind of cons with this system, but after using it, for a while now, I feel like it just works, which is what you want. It's very plug and play. You turn it on, automatically links. And you know, when you're handing something like this off to a client, you don't wanna to have to babysit it and, and you know, teach them all about it. It's, it's very user friendly, which I think is a, a huge selling point in the system. It's also very rugged because clients love to drop things like this on the ground a lot. So the eight pack version of this system retails for $69.99 USD and the four pack version retails for $42.99. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. If you're looking for more information on the system, I put a link to it in the description. Hope this video helped you out and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.